And welcome back to TVS Presents Sport Magazine on radio. I'm John Daly. He had breakfast with Muhammad Ali, drinks with Mickey Mantle. Plus, he was in Riverfront Stadium when Pete Rose passed Ty Cobb's all-time hit record. John Johnston, also known as JJ, is a veteran TV broadcaster, producer, and one of the great storytellers I have ever known. He was a correspondent on Current Affair. He became my senior producer at Real TV. He also launched the first Jim Rome show on Fox Sports. JJ, welcome to the show. Oh, my God. Are you my agent? I love this, John Daly. I love this. <laughs> and I told hey, the truth, we, too. Uh, kind of. But, yeah, absolutely, 110%. I, uh, I've i been very fortunate to work with uh, great people in this business like yourself and uh, to have encounters with people like Muhammad Ali and Mickey Mantle and just being able to sit there and listen to them be authentic and tell their stories of things that that have bothered them in their lives. And, you know, the great thing about uh, sports and, and what we do, John, is we're storytellers. And everything that happens in sports, uh, it's always better when there's a great story to it. Just think of Tiger Woods, you know, winning the Masters. The, the event, yeah, great, fantastic. The story that surrounded it, the comeback that he had, is what made that an iconic moment in sports. And I think that you look for those, and I've certainly been fortunate to be around some of them uh, in my career. Well, let's um, uh, let's let's talk about some of them. Um, you've always been a big fan of Muhammad Ali. How did you get to have breakfast with him? It, you know what? It, it was. I was working with a, a sports nut in um, Cincinnati, Ohio, and he, his name was Dan Brady, and he's maybe one of the best sports storytellers I've ever worked with. And he told me, he goes, hey, we have an opportunity to uh, have breakfast with Muhammad in Dayton, Ohio. And I'm like, you are kidding me. And Muhammad was alone with his longtime uh, photographer, um, Howard Bingham. And so uh, we jumped into a news car and, uh, you know, I felt like I put a siren on the top because I, <laughs> we had to get there as quickly as we possibly can. So we're racing down um, the highway in, um, in one of the news cars, probably going anywhere from 80 to 100 miles an hour just to get there. And we get there, Muhammad comes in and you think this, you know, huge icon of a man would, you know, sit at the best table, do that kind of stuff. He walked in, uh, he greets us, and he kisses us on the cheek. Never met the man before in my life. He kisses us both on the cheek, and then he proceeds to walk around the restaurant, and he grabs every child, kisses them, performs a magic act for them, and, you know, this ferocious guy in the ring, the mouth of war, and all those kinds of things. It was such an incredible side of a guy that I knew was a hero of mine because he always stood up for what he believed in. And he was that person that was willing to sacrifice everything. And he forever cemented himself as not only one of the greatest athletes of all time, but one of the greatest people of all time. And being able to share those moments with him and Dan Brady, who, like I said before, was a sports enthusiast, and Howard. And at the end of the, the, the whole breakfast that we had with him, he was so impressed with Dan Brady, uh, my running mate at the time. He took off his watch. And this was a watch that, I don't know, somebody, some president had given him. He took off his watch and he gave it to Dan Brady and he said, I want you to have this to remember me by. Who's going to forget Muhammad Ali? <laughs> but that's just the kind of person that he was. Wow. We are talking to John Johnson, a veteran broadcaster and producer. He was correspondent on Current Affair, my senior producer at Real TV, and also helped launch the first Jim Rome show on Fox Sports that's a great story. Let, let's, uh, you know, God, that's that's incredible. Let's let's talk about drinks with Mickey Mantle. Uh, you know, I was a big fan of Mickey's as well. Um, uh, 
Yeah. He had some drinking problems, but you had drinks with him. How was he? You know what? I it, it, This was a, an iconic moment in my life. Uh, I walked in, and I don't know how many people would know him, but he, he was maybe the biggest influence on my career. Um, a reporter named Steve Dunleavy, who was uh, – uh, the tabloid pompadour prince of darkness, if you will. Uh, and um, he worked uh, many years for the New York Post. He was one of Rupert Murdoch's soldiers. And he goes, mate, I need you to come down tonight. Uh, I want you to uh, hit the bar with me. With uh, 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 I got somebody special that I think that you'd like to meet. I go, who is it? And he goes, just, just show up. And I said, all right, I'll be there. So I walk in. And it's this dimly lit bar in Manhattan, uh, a place called Elaine's, which was famous back in the day. Jake LaMotta hung there. There was um, another legendary sports reporter there. His name is Jerry Lister. And he had known everybody that ever played sports in New York. And I walk in, and he goes, and uh, Dunleavy said, I want you to meet a friend of mine. I don't know if you, you recognize him, but his name's Mickey. And he, I walk around the corner, and Mantle's sitting there, and he's got a beer in his hand. And and I said, Rick, I mean, this is – as a kid, this is a moment I never imagined myself being in. And then uh, Mantle had already been diagnosed with cancer at the time. But um, it was just a night where, you know, Mickey felt around friends. I certainly wasn't one of his, but – Jerry Lister and Steve Dunleavy were, and um, and he said, you know, my biggest regret in my life is that I wasn't nicer to people, especially kids. He goes, I was a hit from Oklahoma, and all of a sudden I'm thrown in the spotlight, and everybody wants something from me, and they're pulling from me here and there, and all those kinds of things, and. I just, if I would have taken that five seconds and stopped to autograph a kid's baseball or a picture of me or something like that, I would have forever been their hero. And instead, I was the biggest jerk they ever met in their life. And it was five seconds out of my life and the rest of the life for them. And that has always stuck with me, and he's so right. And Mickey Mantle, <laughs> you know, it wasn't because of me. It wasn't. Be- it, it was obviously because he was sitting with people that he was incredibly comfortable with telling this story. But he started crying because he realized how many young kids that he had hurt over the time when it didn't make any difference to him. And then he, he told the story about being in the, uh, being in the all-star game uh, in Anaheim one year. And he kept asking the coach, I don't remember who it was, the manager. He said, Hey, Skip, can I lead off? Can I lead off? He goes, Mickey, you're a power hitter. I'm not going to put, I'll put you up third, but no, let me lead off. And the reason that he wanted to lead off is so he could go up, do whatever he did, uh, and he said he swung at the first three pitches and struck out and turned around, walked back to the dugout, grabbed a beer, headed out to the limo, got on the plane, and watched the rest of the game. And that was the game that went 22 innings in um, in Anaheim. Uh, and he watched the rest of the game dead drunk in Dallas, Texas, so drunk they wouldn't let him get on the plane to uh, go fly back to meet up with where the Yankees' next game was. So he was late getting back to uh, to uh, join the Yankees. But those are the kinds of things that he shared. And just to have those moments with people, I feel so in, incredibly blessed to have been able to share those kind of moments and really you know, peel back the curtain and see who these legends and these icons are. Uh, truly were and where they hurt and where they excelled. Wow. That's great stuff. We are talking to John Johnson, a veteran TV broadcaster and producer. He was correspondent on Current Affair. He was my senior producer at Real TV, and he was on the team that launched the first Jim 
Rome show on Fox Sports. Wow, that's really good. Okay, talk about Pete Rose. Uh, you were there at Riverfront Stadium when he eclipsed Ty Cobb's record hits in a career of 4,192. How electric was that? It, you know, that, that again is the story. Um, Pete is not a real sentimental guy. Um, he is, uh, I'll, I'll just say it, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, um, but he's, uh, if you ask him anything about baseball, the guy is a, I'll date myself here, an Encyclopedia Britannica. He can, he can go back and he can tell you, uh, you know, who did what, when, what this record was, those kinds of things. And um, I was working at a station, local station, uh, WKRC TV, with Nick Clooney uh, back in the day, uh, George Clooney's father. And Pete was our sports guy when um, when the baseball season was uh, not in operation. So, um, you know, I knew him pretty well. We had a lot of discussions and, and that kind of thing. Um, but he wasn't a, a very emotional guy. And the thing that I will forever remember about that night is that um, he got the hit. And it was off of Eric Shaw, and it was a flare to – um, you know, left center field. And I think the guy who uh, picked it up and threw it back to second base was a guy named Carmelo Martinez. And as Pete goes back, he rounds, you know, Pete Rose, Mr. Hustle, that kind of stuff. He's, he's chugging to see if it gets by and he's going to turn a single into a triple. You know, that's who he is. And he, he rounds first uh, and then comes back. And Steve Garvey, was the first baseman for the San Diego Padres at the time. He had left the Dodgers. And Tommy Helms uh, was his longtime best friend. Tommy Helms reached in, pushed Garvey to the side, and gave Pete a hug because Helms told me after that there was no way anybody was going to touch Pete before me after that magic moment. <laughs> and Pete looked up at the, at the sky that day and um, pointed up to the sky and thanked his father for being so tough on him. And he broke down into tears. And that is the only time I've ever seen Pete Rose get emotional, despite everything that happened after his career, ended, you know, being suspended and banned from baseball, all those kinds of things. Um, that was the moment that touched him because it was what he always wanted to do. He had achieved it, and he felt like, his father was uh, there with him standing in the first base. And folks, now you understand why Real TV was such a great show, because we knew how to tell stories, and I had this guy <laughs> helping me tell stories. That's that's great stuff. Now, I There's so much stuff I want to talk to you about, but we're just about out of time. I want to hit Lil Lillehammer, mm -hmm. the Olympics in 1994 that you covered, the Winter Olympics. I want to talk about the Jim Rome show, and I want to talk about the great documentary series you produced for Fox Sports way back in the, I think it was the early 2000s. But we're out of time, so. Well, uh, I'm sorry to, to drain you, John. You know, I could never shut up. That was my big problem. And uh, you, you always took care of that for me. So I really appreciate you uh, reaching out. And um, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best people I've ever worked with. And I love him dearly. You're a great man. I love you too, pal. Thank you for coming on. We've been talking to John Johnston, veteran TV broadcaster and producer who's correspondent on Current Affair. He was my senior producer at Real TV, and he was also on the team that launched the first Jim Rome show on Fox Sports. JJ, you're going to be coming back, my friend. I really appreciate it. I love you, pal. You too. Be well. Thank you. I will. All right, folks, when we come back, the answer to another crazy sports trivia question and my take on what the heck is happening in sports. Hey, boxing fans, tune in to the TVS Boxing Network. 70 years of TV boxing from 1950 to today for free. Ali, Frazier, Liston, Foreman, all on the TVS Boxing Network. Watch now at tvstvnetworks.com. The answer to our trivia question and my commentary coming up next.